November rematch between Joe Biden and Donald Trump essentially set this morning following Nikki Haley's decision to drop out of the 2024 presidential race. Haley did not endorse Donald Trump in her speech yesterday. One big question is now, though, where will her supporters go? Haley says that is up to Donald Trump. It is now up to Donald Trump to earn the votes of those in our party and beyond it who did not support him. And I hope he does that. At its best, politics is about bringing people into your cause, not turning them away. And our conservative cause badly needs more people. This is now his time for choosing. How did well, he choose? That was nice outreach. That was very nice. Yeah. Let's see. This is Come a time on, you can grow your, your base. Well, Donald Trump responded during Haley's speech while she was saying that with this on Truth Social. Quote, Haley got trounced in record-setting fashion. He then invited her supporters to join the MAGA movement. It's worth noting Trump previously said anyone who contributes to Haley's campaign would be, quote, permanently barred from the MAGA camp. Meanwhile, President Biden welcomed Haley's supporters into the fold, writing in a statement, Donald Trump made it clear he does not want Nikki Haley's supporters. I want to be clear, there is a place for them in my campaign. I hope and believe we can find common ground. A Biden campaign official told NBC News, the finance teams for Biden and the Democratic National Committee recently have been reaching out to Haley's donors. Additionally, the Biden campaign has been studying Haley's performance in the primaries, watching those more moderate and independent voters who say they will never vote for Donald Trump. On Super Tuesday, the Biden campaign focused on where those voters are located to target them, potentially persuade them to vote blue this November. It was a pretty sizable margin, depending on the state, not only that voted for Nikki Haley. We talked through some of those numbers up to, obviously, she won Vermont, but even right. in places she lost 20, 30, 40 percent of Republican voters and a big percentage of those saying they will never vote for Donald Trump. So will they go out and vote for Joe Biden? Will they stay home? That's what's up in the air right now. I mean, Sam, it, it really, if you're an incumbent, uh, Donald Trump basically is a three time incumbent now, uh, a bleak bleak message, uh, losing 20 percent, 30 percent, 40 percent of primary voters uh, before you go into a general election. Uh, and yet the media seemed transfixed over, off, over the uh, uncommitted uh, in Michigan or Wisconsin or whatever. That, the numbers were about the same as Barack Obama for, before he trounced Mitt Romney. Uh, what do you make of how each of these candidates go into the general election? I mean, I think they each have their own set of vulnerabilities, right? Trump, it's it's fairly obvious nothing's really changed in terms of the script. He does very little to expand his coalition, although his team would say, hey, we're trying to reach out to black Hispanic voters. Uh, we're trying to reach out to union workers. Um, but more or less stylistically, Trump is not going to soften the edges. He'll assume that Republicans will go back home, and he'll do very little to try to earn over uh, those people who gravitated to Nikki Haley because they were frustrated with his presidency or just because they were repulsed by how it ended. With Biden, it's a different case. Uh, for him, there's a lot of angst among the progressive base. I think that's fair to say. I think there's a lot of angst over his handling of the Israel-Hamas war. But he has made and will continue to make overtures to expand towards those Nikki Haley voters. And he is, as we've seen in the past couple weeks, trying to soften his uh, approach to the war in Gaza in an effort to uh, round out his support among the base. And I just think it's stylistically, it's like totally different uh, presidents going at it. And so, you know, it's it's to be seen how the coalitions are built. So um, Biden has to bring voters home. He needs to bring young voters home. He needs to bring people of color home uh, that they have faded maybe 10, 15 percent there. Um, obviously, Israel, Gaza uh, is having an, an impact. What does Joe Biden need to do between now and Labor Day to start consolidating yeah. that base. <clears throat> I've thought a lot about this. I've been traveling, uh, talking to voters in several states, and it's clear that he needs to be much more visible. Uh, he needs to be talking not only about his victories, and he's got a lot of accomplishments mm -hmm. to discuss, but also telling voters he understands their frustration, he understands their weariness, he understands that for some of them, the economy is not so great right now. The rent is high. Um, wages still haven't caught up with inflation. He needs to speak to that. People are still paying 
um, a lot of money in student loans. If you're a younger American, we've talked about this on the show. If you're under, you know, 40, 45 years old, you know, you're starting to wonder, can I afford to have kids? Can I afford to buy that house? So he's got to really speak to those concerns. And then, of course, he's got to be able to speak even more movingly about the plight of Palestinians, I believe, um, and what he's going to do to ensure that their human rights are protected alongside Israelis. And, and I think he's, he's started to do that, but he needs to be louder. Right. And the president Much certainly louder. has an opportunity to do that tonight in the State of the Union. He's actually spoken very little about the war in Gaza since those initial weeks of the mm -hmm. conflict. I think that'll change tonight as he tries to frame exactly what's going on there. But reports out of this morning that ceasefire talks broken down there in Cairo. So they may not get that in place for Ramadan as they had hoped. Um, you know, George, you know, we've seen uh, the president, he's been on the road a little bit more lately. He's talking to the media a little bit more. They know that tonight's also a moment to try to, to show his vitality for the job. There's been questions about that. We see the polls about his age. And I think tonight, certainly he'll draw contrasts with Donald Trump, whether or not he mentions Trump by name. But he also needs to make a positive case for the next four years. And that's something that some Democrats say he hasn't really done. How would you recommend it? Well, I just think, I mean, I agree with everything Laura said. He, he's got to be empathetic. He's got to be himself. He, I think at the end of the day, he doesn't have to do a hard sell. He doesn't have to, he does have to get out there. He just has to be normal. And the reason that's all he really has to do is Trump won in 2016 because Hillary was the issue. Trump lost in 2020 because Trump was the issue. And in 2024, Trump will lose again because he will be the issue. He will make himself the issue. He cannot help but make himself the issue. And, and what Biden needs to do is just basic, basically say, that guy is crazy. He doesn't have to refer to him by name. He just has to say, the guy's nuts. Let's be normal, America. That's the theme of this campaign, I think. To that point, Joe, Wall Street Journal op-ed page, the top, GOP's third gamble on Trump. Republicans are elevating the one man who could lose to Biden and getting into exactly what George is saying, that Biden may just step back yeah. and let Donald Trump <clears throat> do his thing. Yeah, exactly. And by the way, it's very interesting. Let's be normal. The, the original lyrics to Prince's Let's Go Crazy. Oh, wow. Just the last second of the studio, he switched it. He said, I think this may tweak have a bit more of an edge. It was a good tweak. Let's it be probably honest. was. Yeah. Let's Go Crazy. A little better, better dance. Hard to dance. Let's <laughs> be normal. Um, 